since October 7th, actually 10 minutes after the first rocket was fired, mm -hmm. there's been many, many attacks of cyber on critical infrastructure, financial organization, banks, insurance, news, media, everything, and also government infrastructure. Most of the government is secured and protected and there was almost nothing there happened. But on news and media, there's been a lot. For example, there is a, an application called Red Alert. This is very interesting because every citizen in Israel has a mobile phone with an alert system. We have our own personal banker, a bunker inside our house. This is a safe room that we can run to, a bomb shelter. So in your house, there is something you can run, but you need to know when to run. So there is the alarm, the public alarm that you sound on the street, but there's also an alarm on your mobile app. So Hamas hacked this mobile app and created false alarm or turned the alarm off. And even more, it created a fake malicious application in the same name that Israelis people downloaded and Hamas was able to steal their call logs, SMS, listen, and control their mobile devices. So it's quite alarming. And this is a direct linkage in this attack on cyber, and we've seen it. Most critical infrastructures, nothing happened. Almost everything is 100% uh, stopped. But on news, media, financial organization, we've seen numerous attacks. In terms of cyber, I think Israel is much more prepared and to the physical one that everybody knows was a big surprise. The 7th of October was a surprise for everyone. Leaving conspiracy theory aside, I'm sure this will be investigated after the war. But in the cyber area, the INCD, the Israel Cyber National Directorate, has been very prepared before the 7th of October. It's been doing a great job many years. So as mentioned earlier, all government and all big critical infrastructure have no problem. And we have set up a group, like a, a workforce, okay, and it's called Arava. We are supporting together over 100 uh, companies, hundreds of individuals working pro bono with the Cyber Directorate to support businesses, volunteering and securing them. So in cyber, we're doing defensive, very, very good, but we're also doing offensive against Hamas and other. And we're doing every day uh, coming together and reporting the status and there's been a great uh, progress here and I'm proud to say we're doing much good. What do you expect in the future? Is there even path uh, to, um, to peace and uh, how does this path look? I wish I knew the answer to this. This is a great debate above my pay grade and has been going on for many, many years. Okay? There is a big conflict here and it's a challenging situation. I can tell you that the Israeli want peace. Most of the people are looking to live in peace. We did peace with Egypt, we did peace with Jordan, okay? So we're looking to make we did peace with uh, the UAE and definitely we're looking forward just for peace. Uh, but in order to have peace, it takes two to tango. So you need the other side to want the peace as well. So as long as uh, God, forbid, God would like uh, inshallah, okay, like we say, we can make peace. We're looking forward for this and I believe in uh, working together in hand and I hope in that in my lifetime it will happen. I think the problem is Hamas, not the two state because the Palestinians are not Hamas. Hamas is a part of the Palestinian and if you can see, and it's my personal opinion, that Hamas is using the Palestinians. So if Hamas is off, I think the Palestinian can coexist.